Can I make a video game in three and a half hours with my screen resolution getting worse every 30 minutes? I want to see if I can create an automation mining game like Factorio or Satisfactory in not only the length of a Martin Scorsese film, but also with downscaling what I can see on my screen six times. The only thing I did beforehand was plan out how this game would work. There's going to be ore in the ground which you can mine. With this ore you can build a furnace which you can then use to turn the ore into other materials like brick and iron ingots. With these, you can build drills that will mine the ore for you, and assemble that will build things for you. Once you combine enough of these combinations of items, you can make an assembler that will build you a rocket ship where you can fly away from this wretched ore planet. Can all of this be done in 210 minutes? Let's find out. The race was off at a crisp 1440p. I made the call to make the 3D models before anything else, since modeling requires the most precise actions in my opinion. I only had 13 models to create for this game, so I figured I could get most of them done before the first timer rang. I started by creating a pile of dirt with ore in it that I planned to use for all three ore models, just using a different texture each time. It was right here that I realized I already made my first mistake. I wanted to create my texture atlas before anything else, so that I wouldn't have to constantly be switching around trying to texture individual items, but it completely slipped my mind. For those of you who don't know, a texture atlas is a technique used in low poly games where most or all of the models use the same texture. This only works if you don't need to worry about the resolution of your texture, but the textures weren't the resolutions I was worried about. My time was slipping away quick, so I added in a sprawl of as many colors as I could fit onto a single texture and exported the image. I imported it into Blender and immediately started to texture my dirt when I made another debilitating discovery. I didn't add any brown colors onto my texture. I was already halfway into my first 30 minutes, and I was in shambles. Things even as small as opening and closing Affinity Designer was taking up precious time. I got the brown added, and as quickly as I could, textured the first model, the coal ore. I could easily then just duplicate this model twice and retexture it to make it into iron ore and stone. Next, I moved on to the easiest of the models, the brick and the iron ingots, which took no time at all. I also needed chunks of ore for when the ore is out of the dirt and on a conveyor belt. I did the same technique of creating a single chunk model and duplicating duplicating it three times with three different textures. Eight out of the thirteen models done. Now for the harder ones, the placeable buildings. I started with the furnace, and at this point I had to be careful about the size of everything. I wanted the placement to work on a grid system, which means all of these models need to fit into that grid. I was about halfway into the furnace model when I realized I should be doing the conveyor belts first, so that I can make the entry and exit points on the furnace lined up with those. I quickly modeled the block out of the conveyor belt when I came to yet another time-consuming realization. I needed a custom texture for the belt. Since the belt rotates, I needed a texture that can pan on its y-axis to give the illusion of rotation. So for a third time, I reopen Affinity Designer and quickly create a 512 by 512 texture with arrows, spending a little too much time making sure the arrows are perfectly centered. Now back in Blender, I UV mapped everything to the conveyor belt and then used its dimensions to create the exit point of the furnace. I then do the same thing on the other side to create the two entry points, and right as I'm doing that, I run out of time. Okay, so there is the timer for the- okay, shut up. The timer goes off, which signals me to downscale for the first time. For the next 30 minutes, I have to work in 1080p. I know, excruciating, right? I continue the furnace by adding unnecessary design choices and finish up by texture. Next, it was time to create a drill that would automatically mine resources for me. It was then I decided to add an extra layer to this challenge by deciding that I would give this drill an animation, because what good would a motionless drill do anyway? But ultimately, I decide to leave the animating to the end. After quickly texturing, next I build the assembler. This, I wanted to be able to take up to three inputs through the conveyor belts, so I struggled with the sizing of it a bit, because if you remember, I wanted everything to fit perfectly together on a grid system. I added some smokestacks for some character, and moved on to the final model, the rocket ship. Just like in Factorio, I wanted the end game to be going from nothing but ore to building a rocket ship to leave the planet. I gave it a peephole and painted it a nice deep red, and it was now time to start my Unreal Engine project. I launched the engine, and as I was waiting for my new project to put itself together, the next timer played its bitter tune. Time's up. Okay. I wanted to finish the models in the first 45 minutes, but an hour had passed and I still had to animate the drill. So once again, I downscaled my monitor's resolution for a second time and prepared myself for the claustrophobia of both applications tightening their display. For the next 30 minutes, I had to work at a resolution of 1600 by 900. Nothing too horrible, but it was getting easier to notice a difference in quality. I exported all the models which shaved off 5 minutes and then immediately started rigging the drill. This took very little time because I purposely set it up with disconnected parts, and now I just had to create an animation. This was very simple to keyframe but still ended up taking close to 10 minutes. It was what I did next that wasted too much time, and it was me trying to see if I could add some noise to the drill while it's in the ground so it looks like it's rumbling up and down. I'm no expert on animation, and for the life of me I could not figure out how to add noise to only certain parts of the animation. After a couple minutes, I just gave up and added it for the entire duration, which left a drill that definitely seems like it would not be approved by OSHA. I exported it, and it was finally an Unreal Engine, 20 minutes into the third section of this challenge. Time was slipping out of my hands faster than sand. Then. 
Something so bad happened, I considered abandoning this entire video. But before I talk about that, I want to thank everybody for their support on this channel. <sighs> I uploaded my first video a couple days ago and climbed all the way up to 15 subscribers. Hey, uh, Editor Shawcat here. So I recorded this last night when I had 15 subscribers uh, and I went to bed and I woke up to this number. You guys are absolutely insane. I was not expecting this at all. I just wanted to say thank you all for the support. My mind is blown. Thank you guys so much. Okay, so back to the video. Why did I almost scrap this project? I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. I did the stupidest thing in the world. Earlier today, since I knew I'd be recording a long video, I decided to add a hotkey to start and stop my recording, and I thought to myself, oh, control space, that's, you know, that's not something that I press often. Um, so if you're new around here, this is Unreal Engine, and the handy little button to pull up the content browser is control space. So every time I press that, I have been stopping and restarting my recording. So the last 17 minutes of this video was broken up into a bunch of unusable 3 second clips, because apparently that's how often I press control space on average. So let's recap real quick. In the last 10 minutes of the previous section, I got all my models imported into the engine, then the screen was once again downscaled to a measly 1366 by 768 The engine was starting to look very, very tight. For reference, this is what Unreal Engine looks at my native 1440p. The next 7 minutes were taken up by me creating information about all the items. 23 minutes left on the clock. I had to get the grid system out for place items, so I immediately started coding the ability to do so. And despite forgetting some very basic math, I got it working and now had a furnace snapping to a grid system. I needed to be able to actually place it down in the world, and luckily that took no time at all. I had only set up code for the furnace though, and I still had to create new actors for everything else that you were able to place down in game. I made a widget that has every single item listed at the bottom of the screen, with the intention of scrolling through items to select the one you want. I initially wanted to have icons of the items, but I knew now that I would have no time to get that done, so I settled for just the names displayed instead. It was then, I was bombarded again with the alarm. 960 by 540p. I had no time to complain. With the new system of placing down items in, I had to make them actually require resources to build, which means I needed a way to gather resources before there was a drill. There was no time for fancy animations or HUD displays. You gather ore by pressing E while looking at it. So, now that you have enough ore, you can place the items, right? Wrong. Despite having enough ore, I still couldn't place my furnace. Something in my code was saying I didn't have enough ore. I searched, and I debugged, and I panicked, and I cried a little as my time was ticking away. And nearly 20 minutes later, I came to a great shock. It was never broken, I just... I'm running out of time. Let's keep going. That entire time, I was just picking up the wrong ore. I wanted to throw a fit, but with 40 minutes left on the clock, I had no more time to cry. Next, I made it that when you're placing down a drill, it'll automatically snap to the ore so you can't place them just anywhere on the map. Well, map. My code was starting to look like a delicious plate of spaghetti, but it didn't matter. You can now collect ore, and if you can afford them, place down drills, conveyor belts, furnaces, and assemblers. But I needed them to actually move and process ore into different things. So I made a quick actor of an ore chunk to move down the conveyor no. How did 30 minutes go that fast? Only 30 minutes left. My fingers were aching. My eyes were straining. Straining the spaghetti that was my code. My back was hurting from having my face an inch from my monitor. But none of it mattered. I had a single half hour left to complete this game in the resolution of 480p. I'm gonna be completely honest. <laughs> I don't know if I can finish this in 30 minutes. With that, I started the 30 minutes and opened Unreal Engine. But when all hope seemed lost, I had an epiphany. The game idea was to take different ores, put them through different processors to make new materials, and continue that format until you have all the required items to create a rocket ship that ends the game. But nobody said the rocket ship had to be made out of the finest ingredients. Nobody said I couldn't build a rocket ship out of copper and iron ore. I could make it so this assembler could produce a rocket ship with just those two ingredients. I had 20 minutes left on the clock. 
It was possible. I felt like my muscles were screaming, despite having a job that requires me to sit in my comfy chair all day. I only had two things left to do, actually pass the ore that comes out of the drill down the conveyor belts in front of it, and have the assembler take those ores and produce a rocket ship. I took a drill, and I made it search for conveyor belts in front of it. If there was one, push the ore onto it. Done. I took the conveyor belt and did the same thing. Conveyor belt in front, push the ore. Done. Seven minutes left. Took the assembler, let it accept ore. If the correct ores go into the assembler, make it spawn a rocket ship. Oh crap, I don't have a rocket ship actor. Four minutes left. Create a rocket ship actor. Add an overlap to it. If the player overlaps with it, quit the game. Two minutes left. Everything should be in game. Everything should be working. Where's the rocket ship? Where's the rocket ship? Wait, there's an error. I forgot to tell the assembler to spawn the rocket ship. I had 60 seconds left. I ran back to my code and I added in the spawn actor and rushed to try it again. 20 seconds to timer. I had no time to waste. It had to work. I added the drill, the conveyor belts, and the assembler, and there it was. The glimmering, beautiful, barely a pixel wide rocket ship. I sprinted towards it and with a sigh of relief, the game closed. I did it. I made a video game in three and a half hours at a resolution smaller than a portable car monitor. I wanted to jump up and down, but I simply did not have the energy. I kind of felt dead. Looking back, I probably should have allowed myself to pause the timer for some food and water. But none of that matters now, because I have a rocket ship that I built straight out of stone and iron ore. It doesn't matter that this game sucks. It matters that I did it. And it was fun. Eh, kind of. Anyway. Here's the game back in 1440p. But wait, before you go, there's actually a second part of this challenge I didn't tell you about. The other half of this challenge was to make a game that was actually good and fun without messing with the resolution and with no time limit whatsoever. It's called Nightly Routine, and I've been working on it for two years. Go check out my other video where I talk about why that game is cool and awesome. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.